Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 1545. The topic is nutrition and the title is Methods to Manage Hunger. Now, this can actually be for people not only trying to lose body fat, but there are people who eat for maximal performance, maximal strength, maximal maximal muscle tissue, but they would like to eat a little more than what they're allowed. (laughs) So even if you're eating for performance, strength gains, muscle gains, uh, you might be struggling with hunger as much as someone who is eating to try to lose body fat. So the five methods I just want to throw out there, just quick discussion, get them on your radar and then you can play with them. Uh, Number one is to stay busy, stay active. Uh, Not so active that you burn up more calories and all of a sudden you need more food. But busy as in mentally busy. So whenever I've done diets in the past uh, and had to have hunger cravings, I would go for a walk. And usually it's just a really casual pace. I'll listen to an audio book or I'll listen to like a motivational speech on YouTube. Just something that uh, kind of feels... Like it's building me mentally, emotionally. And then the walk is me being active and away from food. You can also get into other uh, hobbies like music, art, uh, gardening. You know, just something that gets your hand and mind busy. And that can take away from some of the awareness of how hungry you are. And then also people tend to eat... Uh, partially out of being just a habitual act. So at the end of the day, when they sit down 8 or 9 at night, they eat something. Well, if you sit down 8 or 9 at night and you're sitting in front of the TV doing nothing, that can cause you to have that eating uh, behavior. But if you sit down in front of the TV, maybe you pull out a tea table and you do a crossword puzzle or you you play with cards or you draw on something, I don't know, whatever it is, (laughs) just have your hands busy, your mind busy a little bit, and that can substitute the place of habitual eating. So that one is one where it's not going to be, people aren't going to consider it as useful as the rest of these, (laughs) but it is a very helpful one, and it's actually the one that I went to the most uh, because when you get into the rhythm of it, it really helps you build mental, emotional health and strength. So you can really increase your willpower and your overall control over food in the long term. So I really, really, really like that uh, suggestion, and that's the one that I like the most. Now, we do have other things you can do. You can increase your protein intake. Uh, excessive protein is is rare. <laughs> um, you have to be eating uh, well over your body weight in uh, grams of protein. So let's say you weighed 150 pounds. If you were eating like 200 grams of protein a day you could argue that that's maybe a little excessive but the concept of eating too much protein will that cause uh, increase in body fat the answer is no if it is true that the protein doesn't come with uh, extra fats and carbs so we have a podcast number podcast uh, 309 and it's a nutrition podcast titled, Does Excess Protein Get Stored as Body Fat? The, the quick version answer is not really. Uh, so what typically gets stored as body fat is excess carbs and fats that we don't use because they're energy nutrients. When our body doesn't need them, it stores some of them and it, and it gets rid of some of them. So you don't want to have excess carbs and fats, but adding protein, even up to 1.25 grams uh, to your body weight, times your body weight, uh, that's and that's a relatively lean body weight, and I'm giving out a lot of numbers here. But in general, when you increase protein, it really doesn't uh, get converted over to excess body fat. It'll go towards helping to repair hair, skin, nails, build muscle tissue, recover between workouts. Typically, people under-eat protein, so by adding more, you're actually just doing a good thing. You're not going to really have excess. But if you want to learn more about that, it's podcast 309, and you can find all of our podcasts on our website at www.prettylirongym.com. So that is one option. But I have had people tell me, you know, oh, yeah, I I started eating more protein. I had a protein bar before bed. Well, the protein bar had like 30 grams of carbs and only 10 grams of protein. So it's, it's a carb bar, not a protein bar. So you have to be aware of what you're eating. Some of my common choices I have clients do is cottage cheese or um, like meat. Uh, and if you're not a meat fan, you're going to you know probably throw up the idea of that. Uh, but you want to find protein sources that have minimal, if any, carbohydrates and fats. So fat-free cheese, you know, things like that. Something where... It gives you something to munch on, something to eat, uh, and that can satiate some of the hunger. 
but it only is protein, not really any carbs or fats in it. So that's something you can do. You can also drink more fluid. Uh, the more you drink throughout the day, your stomach tends to feel fuller, and that can help you feel less hungry. So we have a, um, there's almost like a stretch reflex, for example, uh, in your stomach lining, in your stomach wall. When the stomach wall is stretched, it releases a, a chemical that the brain kind of recognizes as being full. So this is something where, uh, like competitive eaters, for example, they'll eat like a whole head of lettuce and try to drink a gallon of water as a way to expand their stomach to lessen um, that suppression feeling of, of hunger. Uh, but they don't want all the calories because they don't want to get fat. So they'll do a head of lettuce and water. It's not calorie-based that they feel full. It's just volume-based in the stomach, and then they're trying to override uh, that response. So drinking more fluid can help. Now, if you drink with meals and that causes you to have you know, irritable bowel syndrome or digestive issues, then drink between meals. But drinking more fluid in general is very helpful. Um, typically, you want to aim for at least half your body weight in ounces of water, up to your body weight in ounces of water, and that's going to help kind of give you a general ballpark of how much fluid you should be having in a day. So that's another tip. That's the third tip. The fourth one is to eat slower digesting foods. So if you eat food and you're hungry within, say, an hour to two hours, but your next meal isn't for three or four or five hours, then eat foods that digest slower. Those are typically going to be foods that have more fat content than carbohydrate content. Doesn't mean you can't have carbohydrates, uh, but typically the more fats are in a meal, the slower that meal will digest and the longer you'll feel full from that meal. But you can also have slower digesting carbohydrates, for example, like um, you know sweet potatoes or quinoa uh, versus like white potato and white rice, uh, certainly more so than candy <laughs> and fruit juices and things like that. Uh, fruit, for example, people consider that to be very healthy, but it is a very fast digesting sugar. So if you eat fruit and you're super hungry after that meal, you might want to swap that fruit out for something a little slower digesting. And uh, that will help as well. Uh, um, again, you don't have to do a fat-based meal, but even doing some 50-50, you know, a little bit of carbs, a little bit of fats, and uh, that can help. So I often get, when people ask about diets, they want to know, you know, how much is, like how many grams of carbs should I have a day? How many grams of fat should I have a day? That's, that doesn't matter. They've done 40 billion studies on nutrition, and it really doesn't matter whether you do high carb, low carb, you know, high fat, low fat. So podcast 1021 is a nutrition podcast titled How Much Carbs and Fats Do I Need? It really depends on the preference of the person and the time in which you're eating the meal compared to your activity level, what you're going to be doing after the meal. You know, if I'm about to go work out, I don't want to eat a bunch of fats because it won't digest quickly. It'll be sitting in my belly, and I'll be very upset stomach, and I won't have a great workout. Uh, so I would rather have faster digesting carbohydrates, even if I'm trying to lose body fat, because it's a better energy source to match what I'm about to go do. So podcast 1021 is titled, How Much Carbs and Fats Do I Need? So that'll give you an idea of, you know, the, if you want to quote unquote balance carbs and fats, uh, you don't need to. Just pick whichever one ma best matches the meal that you're having. So you can learn more about that in podcast 1021. Then the fifth suggestion is to eat more non-nutrient-dense vegetables. So if you look at a vegetable and you search like the nutrition facts, so type, you know, broccoli nutrition facts or lettuce nutrition facts into Google, and you want to find vegetables that have the lowest calories uh, per item, you know, per volume. So iceberg lettuce, for example. You could eat enough iceberg lettuce to throw up before you even get like 12 calories. <laughs> so... Now, that's an exaggeration, but the idea is, is you can eat a lot of iceberg lettuce, and that can fill you up. So you do a lot of salads, but be careful of salad dressing. You know, you got to be careful what you add to it. You can snack on celery and carrots. People talk about that all the time, but don't dip it in, you know, it's body weight and hummus. <laughs> you know, so you have to be careful what your additions are. But if you add vegetables to meals, that can help as well. To add the volume to the meal, like we talked about with adding fluid, it can make you feel fuller because your stomach is more stretched. It also, vegetables can slow down some of the digestion of the main foods within the meal, and that can make the meals last a little longer as well. And then also you just have the physical act of eating more food. You see more food on the plate, you have to put more food in your face, and that can make you feel like you're eating more. So those are five suggestions on how to manage hunger, is to stay busy, stay active, do something, keep your mind and hands busy, 
Eat more protein, but be careful of any kind of paired fats or carbs with that protein. Drink more fluid, eat slower digesting foods, and eat more non-nutrient-dense vegetables. Those will all be very helpful. Now, if your hunger is so high that you have binge eating episodes, so you try your best for a day or two, then you eat everything in the house. You try your best for a day or two, then you eat everything at the fast food place down the street. (laughs) So if you're having binge eating episodes, your caloric reduction, uh, if you are in a caloric reductive state, which is probably causing the hunger, is probably too high. It's too great. So lessen it by 50%. So if you're in a you know calorie deficit of 1,000, try to only go to 500. If you have absolutely no clue, just eat a little bit more than what you've been eating. Not back to where you were, so that way you don't make any progress. But whatever the, the adjustment you had made to get where you are now, undo half of it. And try that for a week or two. Let those binge eating episodes lessen and become far less intense. You can then learn how to manage them, and then in a couple weeks you can try to push harder into uh, your kind of strictness or your restrictiveness uh, in the diet. But if you are having binge eating episodes, you probably went too far with your correction in your diet. You need to lessen some of that, gain control over that, build uh, the ability to manage those feelings, and then start working back into a a more aggressive uh, state. Awesome. Well, I hope that was helpful. Very quick hitting stuff, but hopefully it was good. If you have any questions, let me know. My email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. We answer questions for free. So you just send them in. I'll answer them. Then the podcast is yours for free forever. So pretty awesome service. If you share our podcast to let people know about the podcast, make sure they know that they can get questions answered for free as well. Thank you to everybody who shares the support, uh, the podcast. I appreciate your support. Also, thanks to those who donate to support the podcast. The podcast has uh, high host costs every year. I give an hour to it every day, and we want to keep it for free. So I appreciate the donations to help support the podcast and to keep this as a uh, just an awesome resource for everyone to have. If you like the information we share in our podcast, oh, if you want to donate, by the way, you can do that on our website at www.brutalironjim.com. Thank you to those who do that. If you want uh, the more information than what we share just in our podcast, we do post on social media. We have a channel on Instagram, of course, who doesn't, <laughs> and a YouTube, and I'm posting more and more on both of those places, so check us out there. And then if you have any questions, feedback, suggestions, anything you want to know, let us know at our email at brutalironjim at gmail.com. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.